Right, we are back to the big games again. We're looking at uh, On to Richmond 2 from uh, MMP Games. This is the reprint of On to Richmond and Grand Cape Grant Takes Command, and it's also got an expansion which uh, covers the uh, Petersburg campaign. And what we're playing here is the uh, Grand Campaign uh, from Grant Takes Command with the Shenandoah extension. So we've got the Shenandoah Middle and South maps here. Uh, there's very little going on. There's some uh, Union Cavalry way up there in Strasbourg and there's uh, some Confederate Cavalry down here in Rockingham County. I assume that's going to change over time, otherwise there's pretty much no point having the, the extra stuff. We've got off, off map area here. There are some Union infantry units. We're actually in Winchester, which is the north of the Shenandoah Valley. So in theory, they could move to Newmarket would be there. Let's check whether Winchester's actually on the map. Uh, anyway. Forget that for the moment. We go to the main theatre, which we're going whoa, way down here, uh, over here, and we're looking at the uh, Army of the Potomac under Grant, which is pretty much concentrated around Cold Cold Pepper Courthouse, I think it is, in Cold Pepper County. And we've got in Orange County, we have got the Army of Northern Virginia under Robert E. Lee. The situation here is the Union got a bit of a, probably caught you a bit of a disadvantage here that the Confederates are far too far to the West um, to effectively block the Union Army. The Union Army's objective is to get to Richmond. Uh, and I'd also say they have a secondary objective just to destroy the Army of Northern Virginia uh, if they can get it. Now, the Confederates' objective is to keep the Union Army as far from Richmond as possible and inflict as much damage on it um, and create an attritional war, which they did in reality. Um, there were Quite a few battles it was like a, a sliding uh, front uh, as the uh, confederates traded ground for territory um, there's a few very ill-omened places on this uh, road to richmond places like cold harbor where a lot of people were killed um an over junction so Spotsylvania, there's a quite a lot of heavily fought over ground here. There are a few other Confederate units and forts blocking the approach to Richmond there. Uh, there's forts there and then you've got, um, there are garrisons in Richmond and Petersburg which are actually uh, on hold. They can't move to turn three those. Uh, there's a Confederate Garrison over there, which can't move to turn four. Now, way, way over there on the peninsula, there are some Union cavalry. You can just see them in the corner there. Um, I don't know if there's going to be any activity from that point. Uh, I would say this is difficult for the Confederates because they are significantly outnumbered. They have no longer got the advantage in leadership that they had throughout um, the war so far. And uh, I'd, I'd be surprised if they could do as well as the, uh, con the Confederates did in reality. Now there's another Confederate cavalry force over here near, near Fredericksburg. So there we are, it uh, covers a huge footprint, a uh, 10 foot by 4 foot map that's been modified slightly to make it 10 foot by 4.5.
feet to fit everything on and even then it still doesn't fit everything on we've got a little bit of edges hanging over the side up there um, that's 40 turns so this is relative this is with a smaller campaign in this set in this particular box you've got the uh, peninsula campaign which is I think 119 turns and you've got the St. Petersburg campaign which is something like 300 turns or something I say St. Petersburg, it's Petersburg I often call it St. Petersburg um, there we are we are ready to go